Hi guys, today we're going to talk about some of the multiplication and division rules with integers. Okay, in class we have already discussed why uh, the multiplication and division rules work for integers. So this video is going to be completely based on just what they are and a way to remember them. I'm going to tell a story that was um, I heard a while ago and I have repeated a number of times because for some reason it seems to help students remember the multiplication and division rules. And for this story, we need a good person and a bad person. So I'm using uh, Mr. Rag as my good person because uh, you guys all seem to really love him. And I'm using a criminal as my bad person. For this story to work, we also need something that we would consider a good thing, which I'm using uh, winning an award and a bad thing, which I'm using going to jail. So we could say, if good things happen to good people, I totally circled bad things, didn't I? Well, if good things happen to good people, that's a good thing. So, if good things happen to good people, that's a positive. Now, when bad things happen to good people, that's negative. So we could say if Mr. Rag went to jail, that would be a negative. That's a bad thing. So when bad things happen to good people, oops, that's a bad thing. On the other hand, if bad things happen to bad people, that's actually a good thing, right? We want our criminals to be in jail. So when bad things happen to bad people, that's actually a good thing. Now, what if uh, good things happen to bad people? Well, that's not good. We don't want our criminals to be getting awards. We want them in jail. So if good things happen to bad people, that's actually a bad thing. So when good things happen to good people, that's a good thing. And a positive times a positive is a positive. When uh, good things, sorry, when bad things happen to good people, that's a bad thing. And a negative times a positive, or a positive times a negative, is a negative. When bad things happen to bad people, that's actually a good thing. And a negative times a negative becomes a positive. And when good things happen to bad people, a positive times a negative is a negative. So that's just a story for one way to remember the multiplication rules. Whenever you're multiplying to positives or if you're multiplying to negatives, here's my problem. It says simplify 2 times negative 6 times 5. Um, I can really start this any way I want to. I'm just going to go ahead and multiply my first two numbers first. And 2 times negative 6 is going to get me negative 12. Remember, the positive times the negative is a negative. Now I have negative 12 times positive 5. I have a negative times a positive. My answer needs to be negative. My answer is negative 60. The multiplication part of it doesn't change. You just need to remember if your answer now is going to be positive or negative. Here I have a second example. Remember, I could use my associative properties or my commutative properties if I wanted to rearrange. I'm going to just go left to right. It doesn't really matter. Negative 9 times positive 3 is going to get me negative 27 because a negative times a positive is always going to get you a negative answer. Now, 3 times negative, uh, sorry, negative 27 now times negative 4. I'm now multiplying two negatives, so my, I know my answer is going to be positive. I'm still going to just do the math of 27 times 4. Uh, I just need to make sure that I know my answer is positive. I get that 27 times 4 is 108. I know my answer is positive because I'm multiplying two negatives together. We're going to discuss quickly the division rules. Now, I'm just going to repeat my multiplication rules for us. Once again, the multiplication rules are when you multiply two positives, your answer is positive. And whenever you're multiplying a positive times a negative, your answer will be negative. Whenever you're multiplying two negatives, your answer is positive. It doesn't matter which number is bigger. Whenever you have two negatives, your answer is positive. Two positives, your answer is positive. And whenever you have a positive and a negative, your answer is negative. 
Now we're going to go into our division rules. Remember using our fact families, our division rules should be basically the same as our multiplication rules. If a positive times a positive is positive, then a positive divided by a positive should also be a positive. If a positive times a negative is negative, then a negative divided by a negative should give you a positive. Working backwards from here, the negative divided by the negative now gives you the positive. If a negative times a negative is positive, then working backwards, a positive divided by a negative should get you a negative. Positive divided by a negative is a negative. On the next row, if a negative times a positive is negative, then working backwards, the negative divided by the positive should get you the negative. The negative divided by a positive is negative. We're going to do one example of division and then we will work on our Google Forms. So we have negative 28 divided by negative 7. I um, have a negative divided by another negative. So I should know my answer is going to be positive. I can check my work. For these problems, you might want to check your work if you know the multiplication properties really well. 4 times negative 7 does get me to negative 28, and that should always work when you are dividing. So you really want to be careful with your signs on these. Go ahead and work on the Google form. If you have questions, bring them to class tomorrow.